Hello everyone, welcome to Rulebook Rundown. My name is Alan Paquette, and today I will be doing a solo playthrough of the new Cyber Wizard Games Catharsis. It's a massive box, but for a solo game, that's what we got. All right. So I will be going over uh, some of the basic rules as we go, um, but we'll probably do a different video at another time for all of the basic rules. This one is mainly to get an idea of how the avatar character boss gets played against. Uh, the avatar is more of like a choose your own adventure thing. So there will be a kind of caveat right now. There will be some spoilers because we will be going through and like reading the lore and stuff of this deck for part of it. Uh, but part of the beauty of this is that since it is kind of a choose your own adventure, you we won't see all of it. Uh, and obviously if we don't succeed, we won't see all of it. Uh, so we have that deck set up. Um, everything is all numbered at the top for this and we just it comes in order and you keep it in order um, I imagine that ha keeping it face up like this is probably gonna be the best way to go about it we'll kind of see as we go uh, but that seems to be the case we also have our morale track which we're gonna be playing on the easier setting so we will start with the morale just off the track at essentially 22 uh, and then as we progress, then the morale will tick down. And then today, we're going to be going as uh, Dimmerith, the transmuter. He has kind of a unique board layout where uh, at the beginning we assign the six slots to numbers, uh, which is what I'm using the purple dice for to indicate ones are used on this card, twos, threes, etc. Uh, that is how this character works. So when we do roll our dice, whatever we end up rolling, we can only use the dice for the corresponding abilities. So I haven't used this character yet, so it'll be interesting to see how we go. Um, but their roll card here says at the start of the game, assign the numbers one through six to each position of your board. Powers requires dice with values equal to their position number. So there we go. Uh, the passive for him is that you can use the bottom of your cards. Uh, so that is basically just saying while this roll card is face up, you can use either top or bottom like everybody else. Uh, the reason that that's important is because his flip ability will allow one player to replace a power of their choice. You will lose access to the bottom powers on your card while your, while your roll card is exhausted. So since we're doing a solo game, um, I and a lot of our powers already replace themselves I can't imagine needing to use this on ourselves uh, if playing a multiplayer game though then definitely that could come in handy for sure uh, so we have our moves here which we'll get into as we go through uh, but that's that's pretty much it that's the whole the whole setup of the game is your character with six cards dealt out uh, setting up the boss deck, which is usually a boss card at the bottom, and then the rest shuffled, and then you go one at a time, uh, and then the morale track. And we have our tokens nearby, in case we need those for something else. So, let's get started. The setup. Truly, you are a magnet for trouble. You are enjoying a brief rest between hunts as invited guests of an elven court. Tonight, you were dining with a group of elven mages, sharing your observations and experiences over the past months as you attempt to determine a way to stop the corruption of land or stop the corruption of the land when you suddenly felt reality bending, folding, compressing. Something was pushing against the boundaries right in front of you, and you could feel the effects immediately. You jumped to your feet and prepared to meet the foe head on uncertain if you can defeat something that can tear into your realm so easily. All right, so this setup says arrange the cards in the avatar deck in order. Put numbered cards first in numerical order. Put world cards in numerical order using letters to arrange cards for a given world. For example, world A, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, etc. All right, we have done that. Success. This card is finished. Set up two manifestation counters. You shudder to think what this being 
whether a demigod or a powerful outworld entity, could do if it fully materializes. All right, so whenever instructed to gain manifestation counters, place them on this card. Each combat round, when not fighting a boss, add a manifestation counter to this card. The avatar gains powers based on this on the number of manifestation counters on this card. All right, so for zero to six, there's no effect. Uh, seven to nine, he attacks twice. Uh oh, rolling a die. All right, so the more he has, the worse it is. So we want to have as few manifestation counters on here as possible each combat round when not fighting a boss so that'd be when we are doing combat with another enemy that just isn't a boss character all right so we'll keep that out kind of over here off to the side we'll see if we have enough room to keep it there or if we'll move it along the way uh, but we will start with that all right moving to the next card boss avatar all right so this will not trigger manifestation counters an avatar, whispers one of the eleven mages as the being manifests. You look to see the elves moving with purpose, trying to hide their fear. You must hold it off long enough for us to banish it. Questions fill your head. Not least, how the elves know what this is and have a ritual against it, but they immediately start chanting. It's almost as though they are avoiding your questions. Well, a good fight will let you vent some of that frustration. All right, so he has infinite health. That's cool. Uh, the damage, since we're doing single player or true solo, he will be dealing eight damage to the party. Yikes. Uh, we got to be able to avoid some of that. Special. You realize why the mages said you cannot defeat it. Your attacks merely disrupt its form. You cannot deal damage to Avatar. Each round, you may reduce damage dealt by the Avatar by one for each point of damage your party deals. Okay, so if we deal eight damage then they will hit for nothing. Perfect. Special. The drone of the ritual behind you slowly builds in intensity. Put a casting counter on Avatar at the end of each combat round. When there are five counters on Avatar, discard it. Okay. So this would come out. We'll just use this as a cover for the other thing. So, here we go. Uh, we are now in a combat and the players start the combat so we will go ahead and roll all right so we are looking basically to ideally um do eight damage a turn for five turns Ooh, that's that could be tricky all right let's see we've got a one two two three four four so, looking over here, we have one one. If we get three ones, we can prevent this and it'll swap this out, but that might be easier than eight ones for eight damage. Uh, twos, we've got a pair prevent a damage per activation. We can activate that three times. Um, that wouldn't help that much, prevent two damage per activation. Maximum three activations. Wow, you'd have to have a lot of dice for that. Not sure how this character would get more dice, so that's probably not going to go. Uh, healing for one. That's not going to help in the immediate because they attack afterwards. And then we have fours. Deal damage equal to the number of dice on this power. Maximum of five dice. Do not exhaust if two or less dice are placed on this power. Otherwise, deal damage equal to the number of dice on this power plus six. Oh. And it doesn't replace. Uh. Okay. So. It seems like. If we do two fours here. Damage equal to the number of dice on this power. Two plus six is eight. Okay. Uh, do we want to do. Any of the other things. Deal three damage. Look at the top three cards of the deck. Uh, no. Otherwise, oh, maximum of five dice. No. All right, so I think what we're going to do, hitting this will prevent all the damage. And then if we use a three, 
we will heal ourselves one and flip this back over and then only the heal will be deactivated so I'm not even gonna roll the second or third time because that's not gonna matter right now all right so we'll trigger this one of building avalanche to deal damage equal to the number of dice on this power plus six so it's two and six is eight that is the full the full eight to the enemy then this will flip over because we have used that ability then we'll use the three over here to heal us one which flips this back over and then flips this one over all right and that's our turn so up here we have done the eight damage they would hit for eight it's reduced by one per so they hit for zero and then that is just use a die for this that is one turn end of a combat round uh, I do have the option to spend a morale to heal but we're not gonna do that we're just going to roll again I think maybe try to do that again uh, let's see the sixes will let us change a die to another value um, what it was a four we do have a four um, we don't have any ones for our other big hit so I think we'll keep a four try to get one more four not another four two five steals three uh, I think we're gonna risk going for the third roll because we need a four or a six <clears throat> all right we got the six so we can use that here to change one die to the value of another die that a player already controls we control the four so we'll change this five to a four Change an additional die to the same value for each time this power is activated, maximum of three. All right, we're only activating it once, and we only are using that once. So we've got here, uh, so we've used this ability to change a thing. Then we will do this ability again to do the eight damage, so we don't take anything. Boop, boop. Uh, I don't think we need to activate anything else uh, so that will that will be it so we go up here he does eight it is eight is prevented we have completed a second round huzzah on to round three uh, let's see do we want to spend morale to get these back uh, we could if we spent one morale we would heal all the way then we'd be able to hopefully do the same thing we did the first round of just flip this one keep this one with the heal <coughs> so after two rounds we would be like this again yeah I think it's worth it all right so we're going to keep that there we're going to spend the morale in between the turns to heal all of our damage all right now we start another combat round let's roll okay we have a four we have a three And we'll try to get a second four. Hmm. All right, what's this hand of healer? Act heal one per activation. You may heal one less to reroll all dice on this power up to two times and spend them on your other abilities. All right, 
So I'm going to save a second three just in case. So we get this third roll. And we got the four. Excellent. So that means that we won't use that one. And we will deal eight for this. That power is super good. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't say it replaces like all the others, so excellent. Uh, so this would flip over, but then we will heal ourselves one with this one up here, with the hand of the healer. And then that would flip this back over, and we are good to go. Back up here, we take nothing. This goes to three. Back down here, we are ready to roll. We got two fours. Yep. I don't think we need to... I don't think we need to even do anything else. That deals the eight. That'll flip this over. Then up here, they do nothing. This goes to four. So we need to do one more round. Let's see, is it worth healing? We can do three. Hmm. We might need to try for the Draconic Breath this time around. I mean, we could potentially just take some damage too, uh, but we don't want to exceed the damage and have us start discarding abilities. So, <clears throat> like, even if we did three damage and prevented two uh, they would still hit for three, but these would both be exhausted. And then we'd flip two over and lose one. So we don't want that. So we would either need to Draconic Breath or Heal Now. Draconic Breath is three ones. We'll replace the power. Yeah. All right. We'll try for it. Looking for ones. Wow, or sixes, I guess. Uh, okay. Let's... Going to keep two sixes. Because that will let us adjust two dice. We have one one, which we'll put over here for Draconic Breath. So we'll attempt to get the other rolls naturally, or the other ones naturally, so we don't have to use Sage's advice, but we have it there just in case. No ones. One one. Bummer. So we still will have to use the Sage's advice. Um, and that will adjust a die to a one, since we already have one to do there, which exhausts this, and then we will trigger the Draconic Breath for 8 damage, boop boop, and it replaces this power. So this one gets discarded, and we get a new power here. Alright, Song of Hope. Prevent morale decreasing. Interesting. Uh, okay, so that's it for us. So up here, we have done eight. That has prevented all the damage. And we have finished with five. So the avatar is finally discarded. A uh, yes. Oop, I think I'll keep stacking them like that. Okay, moving on to the next card. Let's see what we got. <coughs> Excuse me. Questioning the elves. The Avatar seems to be pulled out of existence, but there are faint ripples left in its wake, the remnants of the ritual. The elven mages look like shadows of their former selves, their magical working clearly taxing in ways you can't comprehend, which begs the question about how they knew about it before the Avatar appeared, much less how they knew what the Avatar was. 
You turn accusatory looks at the mages as they slump to the ground. One of them sighs. This isn't our first time with the Avatar. Every few hundred years, we summon it. Normally, we are able to siphon energy from it, using it to fuel some of our grand magics before banishing it. But it, clear, it, but it came early. Over a hundred years early. And it's stronger than before. I think the corruption has weakened the barrier between worlds. And our previous interactions undoubtedly provoked the Avatar and made it desire the destruction of our realm. Your collectively raised eyebrows make the elf bristle. The benefits far outweigh the risks. We would have been destroyed, all of us eradicated by the other elven races if we hadn't tapped into its power. As it was, we were able to keep them at bay. If we let the magics lapse, they would undoubtedly kill us to the last babe, he insists. You have more than a few doubts about his story. It has the ring of a self-justification told too many times. Then again, if you were concerned about the genocide of your people, maybe you would have made a similar decision. Or maybe not. It's hard to justify the potential destruction of the world. Mm. Alright, then we'll go to the next one. Event. A choice of path. Regardless of your feelings about the summoning of the Avatar, the fact of the matter is that leaving it leaving that the that its leaving has left a weakening in the world. You point this out, and the elf looks concerned. Yes, that's an easy avenue for attack of attack for it, and the next time it comes, it will likely be stronger. The banishment will have made it vulnerable, but that weakness will wane the longer it is away. You can chase after it though, and stop it before it returns. In fact, you must. We can't halt it again. You will definitely be having words with the mages when you get back, but right now, stopping a world-ending entity seems a bit more important. You approach the warp in space and notice that it's flickering between two locations. The Avatar has somehow entered two different planes at the same time. If this is its, is it weakened, you think the elves were understanding, understating the need to hurry. You just need to decide which plane you will chase it through. Effect. The party chooses one. The world radiating heavenly light and peace. That seems pretty good. Proceed to world one. Or a realm where you hear the sounds of battle. Proceed to world two. Um, I actually just had a quick remember -y thought. Uh, did this... I would assume this counts as completing an event uh, or a, a fight with an enemy, so we should actually heal to after defeating that boss. So real quick, these two pretty obviously are going to be the ones we heal. I feel like this is going to be a, a thing to run us through most of the game. Alright, anyway, back up here. Uh, we will, let's go for the Heavenly Light and Peace. Proceed to World 1. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, there it is. World 1. It's a trap. Uh-oh. Cute animals. Aw. Love cute animals. You've never felt such peace. Truly, this must be a heaven. One for animals, based on the small furry critters surrounding you. An involuntary, aw, escapes your lips, and you feel compelled to pet a few. As you touch the first one, the desire grows, overwhelming all other considerations. You vaguely remember that there is something important you should do, but it surely couldn't be more important than spending time with these animals, right? You feel your will clashing against the mental effect. There's something insidious about this place. Alright, effect. Each player rolls three dice. If they have at least two dice that match, they have resisted the charms of the animals and stop rolling. Otherwise, the player exhausts one power. If the whole party fails, the party gains one morale from the peace of playing with cute animals. Aww. If at least one player fails, gain one manifestation counter. Players continue rolling until they roll a pair. If all players have succeeded, discard this card and continue to the next card. All right. So we will go down here. We will roll our three dice. And we are looking for a pair. Hey. A pair of fives. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, 
we've resisted the charms. So we don't gain a morale, but we also don't gain a manifestation counter, which is sounds like those are going to be pretty bad. Uh, okay, we've all succeeded, so we discard this card and continue to the next. Perfect. World 1B. A monster. Animal horde. Your suspicions were correct. This realm is a trap. The peace, the animals, it was all a deliberate choice by the Avatar to distract you. To think that you would be stopped by puppies, kittens, bunnies, and other cute animals. This is one story you definitely won't be mentioning to others. Or maybe you will. You realize that your desire to hunt down the Avatar and kill it has corrupted the perfect peace of this land. The animals nearest you attempt to attack, which would be humorous if not for their small, needle-like teeth piercing and tearing your flesh. Mm. Alright, so they have one health. Okay, They do one damage to the party. Special. They are legion. Uh-oh. Create three copies of this monster for each player. On defeat, the horror of what you've done sinks in. You have tainted a land of peace with violence. Lose one morale. Alright, so there are three of these guys. Uh, we'll do... Ooh, here we go. <clears throat> we'll do this. We'll say one, two, three. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. So it goes down to us to attack. So for damage wise, um, we do not do splash damage on the enemy. So even though I have that attack for six plus, hitting one enemy with that uh, will not have any damage carry over. Um, unfortunately, the other way is not true. If we were playing uh, multiplayer and one person takes damage uh, and they run out of health, the damage does carry over to somebody else. So we'll have to... Make sure that we remember it goes toward against us, not against the enemies. Uh, Alright, so we will start this out here. This is kind of unfortunate, actually, because we only have two abilities right now that deal damage. <laughs> Alright, so we can prevent morale decreasing by one. Uh, we don't really need to do that right now. Prevent one damage per activation. Uh, okay, we might want to do that. Three's healing. Uh, deal damage equal to number of dice on this power. Maximum of five dice. Okay. Uh, don't exhaust if two or less dice are placed on this power. That's neat. Do we have a four? We don't have a four. Rats. And our six that lets us manipulate dice is used up already. Uh, okay, so we do have the two fives which we'll probably use for the three damage attack here. Um, we might want to heal one. Uh, that. All right, so we need two dice. We need a four and two twos. Uh, okay, we'll just we'll just reroll all of them. Uh, there's a four, that'll do some damage. Uh, more five, six ones. No, nope, we don't need that. Last roll. Oh, rats. Okay, six doesn't do anything. Uh, the one we don't want to do right now. Yeah, I'd rather save that. So, unfortunately, uh, so we are dealing damage to the number of dice. There's one die on here. So we will do one damage to this guy. Here you go. Uh, then, unless, hmm. All right, so, the special says, create three copies of this monster for each player. On defeat, 
lose one morale. I wonder if that's defeating all three or if that's defeating each one. I think it might be defeating each one because it's three copies of this card. So it's not, it's, it's technically like each one of them doing this. Ooh, okay. Uh, in that case, since that's the case, I will, well, I will also uh, trigger this Song of Hope. Yeah, so this will prevent uh, morale decreasing by one and replace. The replaced abilities are readied, not spent, which is cool. Uh, okay, so did that, did this one. This one does not exhaust because there were fewer than, or there were two or less dice. So that defeated one of them, and then I did not go drop the morale. Okay. There we go. Uh, these fives do three damage to one of them, which defeats him, which does make our morale go down to 20. And then I don't have anything left assigned, so it is now on their turn, and they will attack for one uh, let's see. What do we want to drop here? On the top of your deck, you can move to the bottom. Top of your deck, you can move to the bottom. Uh, okay. We'll have the eyes of the seer take the damage. Alright. <clears throat> uh, then, this was not a boss encounter. So each combat round when not fighting a boss, add a manifesta manifestation counter to this card. Uh, you got my okay, so that would have been the starting one too. So the starting one adds one. And then we are now going into a second round. Oh, that's unfortunate. So that gets a second counter on it. Um... For defeating those other enemies, we don't heal yet. We only can get the free to heal when we complete the whole thing. Uh, we can, between rounds, spend a morale to heal up. Um, but I don't think I want to do that. I think we will do that afterwards. Okay. So, let's see. We want... Oh, we lost the morale thing. Okay. Um, I think we just need a four. And then we'd lose... Yeah, just a four. There we go. We have a four. Um, healing one isn't going to matter there. So, yeah, that's that's it. Because that's just going to deal one damage, and it won't exhaust this power. So that'll defeat this one, which causes us to lose a morale. And since we have defeated all of the enemies here, we get to heal two. Uh, let's bring back our dice manipulation, and... That lets us kind of stack the deck. We'll go for the damage here. Okay. Moving on to the next one. World 1C event. A choice. You know you've done something wrong when a demon appears before you looking pleased. An impressive display of martial prowess. Killing so many friendly spirit animals. You have succeeded in breaking the protection of this land. I will have quite a bit of fun here, but I know that this was merely an incidental benefit to hunting your quarry. I saw a strange being pass through to my world. I will be more than pleased to point the way. Its eyes gleam with bloodthirst as it looks at the bodies around you, then at the other animals slowly starting to approach. I am quite excited to begin playing. In fact, the party chooses one. We can follow the demon's directions to the abyss, 
proceed to world 3A, or try to stem the taint you brought by fighting the demon. Hmm. Um. Let's see. I think we're going to try to get there as quickly as possible, not try to fight other things as much. So we will, I will follow the demon's directions to the abyss and proceed to world 3A. All right, so we've got that thing, world two, blip, 3A. Okay, the abyss. Either the abyss is poorly named or you traveled to the wrong land. You see rolling hills around you, buildings that look more advanced than any you've seen before. The beings in the area look like the demon you encountered, but they all behave like civilized people, nodding their heads to each other and chatting. Your mind reels as you try to reconcile what you're experiencing with your theology. The demon appears shortly afterwards, lugging a device, the likes of which you haven't seen before. He smiles wickedly. Not what you were expecting, eh? We moved past that whole eternally evil concept. We just couldn't keep up with how fast you mortal races change your morals and the inconsistencies. Slavery being fine in one country but not another. Blaspheming the gods. Cutting your hair. Killing. Gah! How do you keep it all straight? So instead, we've decided to simply eliminate the heavens. Instead of punishing the wicked, which is a slippery concept the very and very time-intensive, we simply will destroy any reason to do good. And this? It waves at the device. It's a test. A weapon powered by the holiness of a heaven. If this works, then we can begin our war in earnest. And if not, well... Now that we have access to that one heaven, we can simply keep trying. It steps away from the device and laughs at your confusion. I guess I'm a bit stuck in the old ways. I will enjoy seeing you struggle to figure this out. Oh boy. Alright. What do we got? We've got an event. Arm the device. The device looks complex, and you quickly realize that it can contain enormous power. Power that can backfire if it isn't properly channeled. So, do you take the time to figure out how to properly and fully arm it? Or to focus more on speed than power? In fact, the party chooses one. Rush job. You don't have time to waste, and you hastily trace the runes you can reach, pulling the device out before it can fully power up. Each player rolls up to six dice. Any two dice that come up duplicates by a player are discarded. Count up the remaining dice and record it at one, one manifestation counter. Hmm. So we don't even get to know what that outcome would be. Or we could take your time. The party carefully traces each rune, knowing that once you've started, you must complete the tracing lest the device explode in your hands. Each player rolls all their dice. All their dice. If a player has a straight, one through six, they stop rolling. If all players have straights, discard this card. Otherwise, add one manifestation counter, and all players who don't have a straight may re-roll any number of, of dice. Continue adding manifestation counters and re-rolling until all players have a straight. Record that you took your time building the device. Uh. <clears throat> Okay, so we would have to keep rolling and keep getting manifestation counters if we take our time versus this is, this is, if there's two dice that are the same, then it's, then it won't be a straight and those dice get brought out, but it's still kind of going for a straight Ugh. and adding one. We've got two on there. 
Well, we rushed in before. Let's see what happens if we rush again. All right, so we'll roll our six dice. Actually, it says each player rolls up to six dice. Any two dice that come up as duplicates or discarded, count up the remaining dice and record. Okay, so we, we do probably want more dice. All right, no duplicates. Okay, not great. Fives are gone. Uh, so we have two for remaining dice. Two. We will add a manifestation counter up here, and we will put this. So this one says, "Oh, that's just for okay." Yep. Uh, so I will. I'm going to put this a little separate to remind that we did that, and have two markers on there for that rush job of the two dice okay moving on monster the watcher after laughing at your struggles and offering more than a bit of bad advice the demon guides you to a familiar fold in reality you're about to step through when two angelic beings appear before you defilers one roars at you the slaughter of the animals can be forgiven as your cause was noble. The peace could be restored, but you have allied with the demons. We cannot forgive that. All right. 12 health. They deal one damage. Special. Reveal card world 3D. You must fight both monsters simultaneously. Great. Special, holy or uh, the holy aura around the angel makes you relive all of your mistakes, drowning you in your failures. The watcher steals two dice from each player at the end of each turn, dealing four damage in a combat round, cancels this power for that round. Okay, on defeat. Seeing his compatriot fall, the other angel redoubles his assault. The guardian's power now requires eight to cancel its attack, and its attack increases to two damage to the party okay so we've got that and the watcher and the guardian guardian says your actions will undo the balance of the planes you've started an unending war and for what just to save one world over a thousands of others and a prison world no less one that should never have been the angels look at you with a mixture of pity and righteous rage May our holy wrath purge your souls that you not make the same mistake in your next lifetime. All right, so he has the same amount of health, same amount of damage. The light streaming forth seems to obliterate your ability to think about anything other than your guilt. This guy steals two powers from each player at the end of each turn. Ugh. Dealing four damage in a combat round cancels his power for that round. On defeat... Seeing his compatriot fall, the other angel redoubles, redoubles his assault. So now he requires 8 damage to cancel the attack and increase by to 2 for damage. And then when they're both defeated, without the aura or light, you feel yourself return to normal. Return all stolen powers and dice. Oh boy. Alright, we're going to move this out of the way here. Actually, I guess we'll move it up here. So this is the manifestation stiff. Manifestation Station. Uh, this isn't a boss encounter, unfortunately. So, at the start of the round, we'll gain another token. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Quick drink of water here while we figure this out. Okay. So, we need to deal four damage to each not have stuff be stolen that's gonna be pretty tricky as we have an attack that deals you know significantly more than that and three damage <clears throat> but not four um. <coughs> 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 hmm 
We could try to focus fire down one of the people. Um, probably the one that steals powers because that is also health and that's not good. <clears throat> so... Let's see. Um, I just realized I only rolled five dice instead of six for that other thing. Because we had the three fives, a three, and a six. Oh, that's, that's not good. All right. Uh, back to that arming the device. We actually only had one because I didn't roll all the dice. Neat. I guess I could have just rolled five or whatever. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so let's roll and see. All right. We got some fours. Six. Seven, eight. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Let's roll these. We'll take another four. Take a three and third roll. Another four. Awesome. The two isn't enough to activate wings of an angel. So we will hit the guardian. Yeah, because we're going to assume we can do the 8 damage to stop doing that each other times. Alright. Going to hit the Guardian for 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 6 is 10 damage. Bam, bam. <coughs> Which will flip this over. Uh, and then we will heal ourselves one. Which flips this over. And heals this one back up. Uh, okay. Then it is their turn. Uh, the Watcher deals one damage to the party. Uh, let's see. We're going to... Uh, we're probably just going to end up healing after all this. We're going to take the damage here. Uh, and then, since he did not get hit with four damage or more, we're going to give him two dice. And then the other one deals one damage. And... Yeah, we, we will need to heal. That's going to go here. Uh, and then we did do four, we did exceed four damage on him, so he does not steal any of our powers. All right, at the end of the round, we'll drop a morale to heal everything. Because otherwise, we would end up losing something because we wouldn't be able to defeat both of them at the same time. And we would have to exhaust or we would probably exhaust all of our abilities and then take too much damage, and we don't want that. Uh, so up here, we are also going to be adding, it's another round, another counter. Uh-oh, we're at five. If we get to seven, then it starts getting bad. <clears throat> all right, back down to us. So really, we want um, two fours and... Two fives. Yep. That's the dream. Two fours, two fives. Uh, not two ones. 
<coughs> oh man. So if we don't if we don't hit the other guy for four, he's gonna take two more dice. And we'd be down to two dice. That would be not much to attack with. Ugh. I don't like that. Alright. So we have those. We get one more roll. Come on. Four. <clears throat> Alright. Not good. Um... Don't really want to need to scry one. Uh, actually, okay. So we have a one and a three. I think I will trigger the eyes of the seer for the no cost to look at the top card of the deck. I can move it to the bottom and then replace this power because we're not triggering the one for anything. Deal one damage does not exhaust. Oh, that's... That's good. Deal four damage and exhaust this power. This power is activated twice. Deal five more damage. Jeez. And replace this power. Maximum two activations. All right. Yep. We're going to keep that on top. And then replace it with this. That way we can deal one damage and not exhaust. And then we'll be able to heal one. Okay, <clears throat> so dealing damage. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's <laughs> not great. All right, we will do three damage to this guardian to stop his nonsense. So on defeat. Seeing his compatriot fall, the other angel redoubles his assault. So he now requires 8 damage to prevent his ability, and he will deal 2 damage. Yep. Uh, actually, you know what? If 2 powers get stolen, <clears throat> he still is within 2 damage of being defeated, the guy would still be doing two damage a turn regardless. All right, new plan. Uh, going to use the three damage onto this guy, and then that's gonna use this ability. Then we're gonna use the heal to heal this one back. That's those. And then we're going to use the one damage that doesn't exhaust to put this guy to four damage on him. <coughs> and yes. So now when it goes to their turn, uh, he has taken four, so he won't steal two dice. He still will do one damage, which we're going to do right here. And then this guy is going to steal two powers. So we will let him steal these two. So those are gone. And then he does one damage which is gonna be four. Whoa. It's gonna be this one. All right. I think we're gonna try to go for broke here. Uh, okay. That's the end of the turn. Not going to heal because we only have one thing. We start another round. Bummer. 
puts us up to six. We've got four dice. And if we get two fours and two fives, we win. Ooh, that's not either of them. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to keep the two sixes on Sage's advice. <clears throat> Three sixes on Sage's advice. I guess we're getting rid of that one. And a three, which doesn't do anything. Rats. All right, let's see. So we can't do both, but this one will let us... Uh, does it change one die? Probably have another die that player already controls. Yeah, we don't have that. Change all dice on this power to a value of your choosing. Assign them to a power you control. There's no limit to the number of activations for this power, and then replace this power. <clears throat> Alright. Assign them to a power you control. Oh no, I can't... It doesn't just let me set the dice and put them anywhere, I have to pick one. Okay. Well... If that's the case... Oh, this is bad. All right, we're going to set them to fours. And do nine damage to the Watcher, which is enough to defeat him. Uh, we don't get the dice back till both of them are defeated. All right, so nine damage. Defeats the Watcher. So the Guardian is souped up now. Okay. That exhausts this power. Uh, that also, I used Sage's advice. So that will replace this one. Replaced powers are always face up. <clears throat> Deals four damage, three damage, okay. All right, now it's his turn. He hits for two, which we're gonna do these two. And then we didn't do eight damage, so he steals two powers. Um, He's going to steal this one, and the six. Okay. Oof. Oh, this is, this is real bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, so these are all stolen, and then it goes to our turn we get another counter up here uh, I'm going to have to drop a morale to heal unfortunately I can only heal these two because the other ones are stolen and then since our morale track we hit the next threshold everyone takes one damage so that means that we take a damage here okay not not great. So now we have to roll a four and we win. Yikes. Okay, we got it. Uh, actually, we got two fours. So we can do this top one of building avalanche because it deals two damage and it won't exhaust if two or less are placed there. Ha ha. So he takes two damage, which puts him to 12. And he is defeated. So, uh, 
all of our stolen powers and dice are returned. Hooray! This doesn't exhaust. These are all returned. I assume they are still dead. Uh, since we successfully defeated the thing, we heal too. Uh, I will drop a morale though to heal the other three. All right. Ooh. That one was rough. But let's see what's next. Event. Activate the device. With the angels dead before you, the demon starts dancing with glee. You have fallen in ways I never expected. And through it all, you still think you're doing it for a noble cause. What are millions of lives in the overall flow of time? What is your one world truly worth? Is what you did good? Or is it actually irredeemably evil? With disquiet in your hearts, you step through the portal. You appear in a different land, a barren waste, but you have little time to pay attention to the world around you. You see the avatar, weakened, but still powerful. You quickly aim the device at it and turn it on. Hopefully your efforts were not in vain. Uh-oh, I think they were. Uh, reveal card world 3F. During the fight, the party gains a benefit based on their earlier choice. Rush job. That's what we did. The device deals damage each round equal to the total you recorded. This counts as an attack originating from the device for the purposes of Avatar's manifestation abilities. So we do one damage each turn from that. Or the take your time, the device deals five damage each round to the Avatar. This counts as an attack originating from the device for the purposes of the Avatar's manifestation abilities. Uh, bummer. Okay. So 3F boss avatar 50 health whoa okay a ray of energy strikes the being before you and it lets out a roar of anger and pain once connected the ray follows the avatar the divine energy powering the device burning away its protections otherworldly essences seem to move through it and you realize you are not equipped to kill it even with the device at best, you can weaken it for a long, long time. That will have to do. All right, 50 health. Holy cow, 200 in a four-player game. He will deal one damage to the party. That's good. Set up uh, special C setup manifestation counters for the avatar special abilities. All right. Two, four, six, seven. Doggone it. We almost had the no effect. But instead... He attacks twice each combat round. Alright, so he hits for two instead of one. Could have been worse. Uh, even now, the avatar continues to gain strength. Every three turns, increase the manifestation tier by one. Tier by one? Oh no. Then, okay. If at the 17 plus tier, the avatar gains a deity counter instead, each DED counter gives the avatar plus one damage. On defeat, read ending world 3G. Okay. So, uh, let's see what we got here. All right, so we have him here for the 50 health. We got the manifestation counters. Uh, we will use this to keep track. Every turn, increase the manifestation tier every three turns. Okay. So it's going to be turn one. We are on the seven to nine. I'll read the other things when we get there. Uh, we will be dealing one additional damage each turn. All right. Yep. Okay. One damage from that each turn. And it is our go. All right. Well, building avalanche is going to be MVP. That's for sure. Let's see. There's a four. Five, five is three damage. Six, six is four damage. 
four, seven. I mean, this, this actually seems real good here. Because we'll get to do seven, 10, 14 damage and heal one of them back. We'd have three damaged. Um, yeah, I mean, that seems all right. Okay, so seven damage from here. Eight, nine, 10. 14. Uh, this would flip, but we're going to heal one instead and heal this back. <coughs> Actually, will that matter? Because he's going to hit for two, which would flip over two more. I'd have five flipped. I would probably want to drop a morale to heal. So maybe, maybe instead of doing this heal, we re-roll this. Because getting a one or a four will add another damage. Roll the two and a five. All right, I don't think the three for on five no, nope, no three for round five. Okay, didn't matter. So these are all exhausted. Uh, oh, I forgot. Seven, ten, fourteen. Okay. Five, two, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, actually, with the plus one from the device. There's 15 damage. Okay. That's not too shabby. And then on his turn, he hits back for one, but because of this, he hits twice. So now he does two damage. We're gonna just take two damage. Have I been bumping this? Oops. All right, there we go. We'll take two damage, uh, but then we are going to drop a morale to heal it all up anyway. So, meh. Okay. Uh, now it's round two. And back to us. I mean, 15 damage a go is, is pretty good. I mean, we have enough morale, I think, to, to keep, oop, to keep going with that. Um, all right, three ones is four damage and exhaust this power. If this power is activated twice, deal five more damage and replace the power. So we would have to get three more ones. That's not really likely. Three dice for four damage versus two dice for four damage. Um, I think we'll keep the five and the six and re-roll. Yeah. It's a good ability, but without any other manipulation, it's not, it's not going to not going to work very well. All right, so we got a four here and a five here. And a three and a two. Let me roll both of those. A five and a four. Okay. Oh, this is unfortunate. So the four can help on there. The five doesn't help. We didn't get another six to trigger this this time. So... We are just doing six, seven, eight, eleven. 11. 
with our device is 12 more damage. There's a 25 in here, right? Yeah. So 12 and 15 is 27. We're halfway there. <clears throat> Six, seven, eight, eight, eleven, one, twelve. Yes. Okay. So that flips these two over. Uh, we're gonna end up healing. He's gonna do two damage and flip these two over, and then we're going to take a morale and heal everything. So just we'll just keep it like that, and then it goes to the next round of three. Every three turns, increase the manifestation tier by one. All right. So this is the third turn. So now we will have to roll a die for each ability you trigger. On a one or two, cancel that ability. Roll separately for each activation of a combo ability. The power is exhausted as normal uh, or rotated or flipped. And the dice can be used on other powers. Ugh, that's real bad. All right, well, not much to do about that, so I guess we'll just roll again. All right, there's two sixes for four damage. There's our a four. Additional fours don't really do more damage. Um. We want those fives. Those aren't fives. It's another four. Eh. Try again. Hey, hey, two fives. How about that? And a two that does nothing. So, here we go. Uh, we'll activate. Building Avalanche for seven damage. Roll a die for each ability. Here we go, Building Avalanche. We want not a one or a two. Ooh, that was close. All right, uh, we'll just we'll just add that on now. Of five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, this one is flipped. Then we'll do the three damage. Successful three damage. Oop. And then we will try the four damage. Successful four damage. Which with the device makes... Oh, wait. Uh, for each ability you trigger. It's not an ability we trigger. Right? It says... Um... Uh, this counts as an attack originating from the device for the purposes of his abilities. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Um, yeah, that does not, does not go for this. It's interesting because the other one, or the other two, neither of those interact specifically with the device either. This counts an attack originating from the device for the purposes of his manifestation abilities. Huh. Well, it's one damage. We're. <clears throat> We'll, we'll be fine. All right, so that's another five from that ability and the thing. <coughs> oh. All right, what do we got all together here? 25, 30, 35, 38, 39, 42. 42. <clears throat> 
new plan. Forty-two. Okay, I think we'll probably get there next round. Uh, his turn to attack. He's gonna hit and take out both of these. <clears throat> Uh, and then we are going to drop a morale to heal everything up and then take two damage, which are going to be these two. Flip these over now. Okay. Um, actually, does he do two damage still? Uh, whenever instructed game manager... Avatar gains powers based on the number of manifestation counters on this card. I don't know if he gets all the previous ones as well or not. So, like, if he loses attacking twice to gain <clears throat> potentially canceling an attack. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's going to matter for this game in particular, uh, but that will be probably something to look up uh, or maybe sending a message to the developers to clarify that if it's everything or just this I will treat it as everything uh, just because I already did two damage and I don't want to go back uh, okay so now we go to the next turn which is four so we have another turn for this ability as well and it comes down to us and it's time to roll <clears throat> So we need to deal eight damage to win. So we need two fours and we win. Four sixes, gee whiz. Okay, we'll keep a five. All right, there's a four and another five. And a six. Third roll. A two ones. Okay. So we can put one here. Uh, let's go for... Two. Okay. We will start with... Building Avalanche. If we get a one or two, it fails. Oh. But good news, we can put the four somewhere else. And that's not how this character works. Alright, uh, we will go for Devotion of the Faithful now, then, I guess, for three damage. Okay, we have successfully done three damage. 45. Try this four damage. Oh no, we didn't get the four. Oh no. Uh, we got one damage up here that doesn't exhaust. Okay, we did one. And then the thing hits for one. So we're at 47. Dice don't work well. He has three hit points left. Okay, so that's this flipped over. He attacks, and we're just saying that he still does his combat twice, so that will damage both of these. And then we will drop a morale to heal everything. Boop. Boop. Okay. And then, uh, this ticks up. If we make it to the next round, then he gets another thing. Hopefully we won't make it there, though. Alright. We need three whole damage on him. Well, one four will be enough for that. We get a five on here. Um... Yep. There's a six, a five, 
Try for one more six. Got it. And the heel one. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> We're going for building avalanche. Will it be successful? Yes, it will. Seven damage. All right, let's see how overkilly we can do. Because that's how I like to roll. All right. So that one's done. Three damage. Nope. Four damage. Yep. Boom. Boom. And then oop, down here, we'll heal one to bring this back. Okay. So, 47, 48, 58 damage. Overkill. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's a epilogue success. Or, wait. Is it on his defeat? Ah, uh, yes. Not, not our defeat. His defeat. Okay, there is. Uh, read 3G. Here we go. The ending. The avatar reels in pain. The device continuing to pump energy into its body, nearly halting any form of regeneration its body may have. Nearly, but not completely. The avatar will recover one day, and it will come back to your world. You can only hope that whatever is corrupting the land has been defeated. The barriers between worlds once again strong. You have seen that the Avatar can tear through different realities, but it was only able to enter your plane by being summoned. You aren't sure what is so different about your world. Perhaps this is tied to the angels saying it's a prison world? You make your way back through each portal, emerging before the elven mages. They still look exhausted, but now they are surrounded by hundreds of others. Mages, warriors, and more stand ready to defend against whatever might emerge from the portal. Seeing you causes them to cheer, but a quick glance at the Mage Council lets them know that you need to speak privately. You explain what you did, and that their actions led to what likely will turn into a conflict between the heavens and the abyss, the likes of which only the, the divine text hints at. And you warn them, that they will be unable to summon the Avatar for a long time. With horror, you realize that they are immediately reframing what you tell them to further justify their actions. If you were willing to provoke a divine war for them, surely they must be in the right. With despair, you wonder what worse things they will do. And that is Catharsis. <clears throat> so that is against the avatar character so as you may have seen uh, we did discard a whole other world thing and there's this whole other stack of cards so we we really went through like a third of this character so just making some different choices would have you know led us to different locations and that would have been pretty awesome so you know a replayable scenario much less the uh let's see the this many <laughs> scenarios that are in the game anyway like we just did the one and that can be done numerous times awesome this game is super cool i cannot wait to get it to the table with some other friends to play multiplayer um but I hope that everybody enjoyed this and that uh, there also is a Kickstarter that is going on right now for some Catharsis stuff. Uh, I'll put that link in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested. Um, but that was Catharsis. And I guess until next time, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.